Oh. Jay, you used to dabble in script writing. Yeah, I, I've. Uh, I think we talked about the last time I was yeah. here. I did a full. I did a full feature, like 199 pages, about an inspirational speaker, and I have like a pilot I've been working on for like a pilot, like a not a pilot, but a screenplay for a potential pilot. Or we should all just pilot. make something. Right. Well, I had an idea for Russell Peters. Oh, I, know I don't want to disclose it. Like, no. I think it's a brilliant idea yeah, for a good him. Idea, yeah. But now he's doing Indian Detective. Jeez. God, that guy. Too busy. He's just a slow down. He, and he, give us some, some of his time, you know? <laughs> Are you a good writer? I hope so. Yeah? How I mean, do you I know think that? So. Yeah, like, how do you, well, I, don't I don't know. know. I think my mother says so. The Todd Shapiro Show. How are you, Matt? I'm good. Now I can talk, right? Yeah, Matt Hansen. Oh, good. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Um, you know, we're back at work after a week off, so we're yeah, like... It's tough. It's a tough job talking it's, to people here. It, it, you know, it's... Uh, how's Having your energy, Jay? How's your energy? Is it good? Mine? Yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel all right. I'm a little... Uh, I feel it's a little different, right? Being back, You lose a week and then uh, you don't... Uh, you forget. Did you do shrooms while you were gone? No, not <laughs> okay. enough. Not enough. Are you on shrooms now? No. Uh, now, oh, okay. yes. Now I'll Back to going. the routine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Low dose of psychedelics sure. before going on the radio. So that's the way to do it. Matt's a writer, a uh, movie writer, script writer, screenplay writer. Makes money selling scripts. Uh, you must do shrooms once in a while. I haven't for a while. Because no. I'm a good help. But, uh, you know, maybe I should. Yeah. You know, a bit of energy. I heard Stephen King used to do a ton of blow and just hammer out novels in the world. I don't know if that would Is work. Is that true? You know, I mean, I think that kind of stuff, it would just like, you'd probably start that. And then after you start typing, you're like, I don't want to write. I want to go do something else, you know? Yeah. So I think that kind of stuff probably just gets you uh, a little excited and makes you forget about writing, you know? So but maybe just taking something to chill you out a little bit would be good. Are you working on some projects right now? Yeah, sure. I got a couple. I mean, as a writer, you kind of have to have like a bunch of things in the fire, you know? It's kind of like you ask five girls out to the prom, hope that one says yes, or ten, and, you know, one says yes. So it's kind of like you have a bunch of things in development, so I've got a bunch of cool projects working on right now and hoping that one will kind of fly. Can you get money while you have stuff in development? Like, do you get yeah, paid yeah. to yeah, do that? Yeah, that's sort of how it works. Like, basically, the, you're paid a little bit for development just to write it, right? And then uh, there's various stages, like first draft, second draft, and then eventually, hopefully, it gets funded, and then you get pay a little more how do you how do you do you have to sell yourself to get even that oh, development fee you gotta do stuff todd you gotta do a lot of stuff no i mean you just gotta hustle <laughs> i mean you know like as a writer you're, it's just like you you're hustling all the time you know you're always kind of um selling yourself you're always trying to get deals you're always trying to meet people do you pitch like to networks and say hey i have an idea for a show uh no, they don't listen to me no, what's that they don't listen to me no they do yeah well, you do is that you so do. who's giving you money right now cbc Comedy well no Network, like who? there's like producers will get money through various sources and then they'll pay you to write the script but yeah i mean you definitely do that kind of stuff you're always kind of pitching right i think any writer is always pitching he's always so what's working. the process how does a movie get made well it depends i mean in canada we work something like this like you maybe engage your writer to to write something you know and then in canada it's getting funded publicly you'll have to take that a telefilm and get telefilm money. But along the way, there's various stages of public money or private money that will fund the development. You know, it kind of, there are very different ways to get it. Who has the idea? Like, will you ever have an idea and then go to a producer and say, I have an idea yeah, to write a script? So. I mean, it's funny. Like, lately, it's been the other way around. It's been, like, producers are like, I got this great idea. Or not an idea. I've got a kernel of an idea. Or an adaptation. Like, I'm working on this comic book adaptation for another producer uh, that they need you to write they engage you to write you know so it's actually more fun sometimes as soon as it sounds someone else having the idea lately you know it's like you run out of ideas so it's kind of cool to take someone else's idea and then put your own spin on it you know i often find that helps it's yeah, it's, it's sort of like the yes and theory in improv like someone gets it and then you build on it and absolutely. you just keep going with it and you take your own voice too and there's something kind of magical too what happens when people are in a room they don't need to be writers they can be a writer and a producer they can be anyone uh that you kind of throw ideas around and something kind of happens like even if someone gives a really shitty idea you respond with a shittier idea and then somewhere along the line a good idea comes it's kind of a neat process you know is it confusing writing a couple of different scripts at the same time well uh kind of i mean you definitely your motivation changes on what stage they are too right but i mean if, i mean you're supposed to write something you like i think that's the whole point um you get excited by everything so no it's it's okay you know? jay you used to dabble in script writing yeah I, i've uh, i think we talked about the last time i was yeah here. i did a full i did a full feature like 199 pages about an inspirational speaker, and I have like a pilot I've been working on for like a pilot, like a not a pilot, but a screenplay for a potential pilot. Or we should all just pilot. make something, right? Well, I had an idea for Russell Peters. Oh, I know. I don't want to disclose it. Like no. I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's a good him. idea. Yeah. But now he's doing Indian Detective. Jeez, God, that guy too busy. He's just a slow down. He, and he, give us some, some of his time. You know? <laughs> Are you a good writer? I hope so. 
Yeah, how I mean, do you I know think that? So. Yeah, like, how do you? Well, I don't know. I think my mother says so. Is that is that oh, your gosh. like profession? Like, someone asks you what you do, like you just yeah. say you're right. You're yeah, a I mean, writer. Also, I'm you know I'm writing some this comic book series too. But yeah, I think I'm, I hope. I mean, I got a movie in fucking theaters right now, so I hope I'm okay. Yeah, you know? Zoom. Yeah, uh, you wrote Zoom. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and so. then congrats. We spoke about Zoom when it got, yep. was out last year at the, at the Toronto International Film Festival, yep. and this just goes to show how the process works. Exactly. That you go to these film festivals to sell distribution, and yep. eventually they get put in theaters exactly. where people can go and watch them and and you're up for some awards and stuff yeah yeah that was uh in january i was nominated for one of these canadian screen awards i thought it was a mistake for the longest time because there's that room movie you know so i figured they kind of screwed up the art that's the, hilarious the art that. i'm not even kidding i said this the other day and i'm not even being funny like i was you know they tell you before right like, like you know matt should probably show up because he may be nominated may not be but you don't believe anything until it's final right and the whole time i'm thinking like this has got to be a mistake it's got to be room right because room got like seventeen thousand nominations and everything and even at the awards i'm sitting there and right behind the room guys you know behind jacob Trump, I'm just like, this is a mistake. Like, I'm a seat filler or something here. You know? Mazda got put up for the room, their room. Uh. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of oom um movies out there if you think about it. So, so is, yeah. that, is that neat? Do you get, when you start getting these awards or nominations, and people are like, oh, Matt, Matt, Matt can write. Matt Hansen. Yeah, that definitely writer. helps. Let's hire Matt. No, it definitely. It's sort of like, you know, it's one of those things where we're like, oh, huh. Like, they were like, huh. Because I didn't, <laughs> when I, I now I've become this <laughs> self promotional kind of thing, you know, but I wasn't talking too much about it before. Uh, it's just a, it's a nice pat in the back, you know, and also, yeah, like people. You get nervous? Like like this like could it end like you know you get nervous you write a million things even, it's just stop I mean I hope not you know I mean it's just sort of like one of those things where you hope that things build on each other right like after the award thing people more people contacted me and, and it just gives you a little bit of a a little bit of cred you know because you know me you know whatever one, my cred you are know? you competitive with other writers uh no but I think it's like. I, I could see me being competitive, you know? Like, I think it's like I'm happy for other guys and girls I know that get stuff done, but there's also kind of like, I think if there's a dry spell, then you'd be like, oh, shit, you know? How okay. come so-and-so is getting something? How come Shapiro's got a movie made? And know? why are you moving out to L.A. to do this? Maybe I will. I don't know. You, you like L.A., huh? I love L.A., bro. Yeah. You, you the, probably got the, we both have the L.A. look, don't I, we? I said, I don't know what L.A. look is. I think L.A. looks just being comfortable in who you are. Like, yeah. uh, there's so many unique personalities. I mean, listen, they're probably just as insecure, too. But, yeah. I mean, like, it's just that you have a look or you have a way about you and you yeah. just kind of stick with it. You can't change it. It's too yeah, late to change true. it. That's true. Yeah, but I, that'd be cool. I mean, I think in Canada, it's, it's kind of uh, right now just because of, you know, it's it's not who you know. It's it's why you know them kind of. And I know now a lot of people just working at the, you know, Entertainment One where I worked for a long time. So you kind of have to use those contacts while you yeah. can, right? Um, so uh, for now, you know, I also like Toronto. Do you like Judd Apatel? Yeah, of course, of course. We met Judd, AJ. Eh, Judd's a is he beaut. funny guy? Is he actually funny, funny like in person, or is he like what's he Just, like? Just Roddy got a chance to talk to him more than I did, but he really seemed to be like really open and cool and like down earth, dude. But you know, when you meet a comedian, you know, and he's sitting there, like he's always kind of on, you know. Or he is not. a comedian too. But though, I'm right? saying, yeah. what is he? Is he funny or is he, he's a businessman too? Right? He like, didn't seem to have that like. He didn't. He wasn't like most other comedians. You know yeah. what I mean. He wasn't on, but he yeah. was very nice. Yeah, yeah. Like, just cool. He's guy. just a nice guy. Yeah, like, you know, cool. listen, he's worth over like we figured out over ninety to hundred million dollars. Yeah, or he's something. an icon too, right? Look yeah, at all the a, movies he's made that we loved. I, and I had no idea the list of the movies. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I thought it was just like knocked up in a couple others, but there's like there's like thirty of <laughs> uh -huh. them. And and yeah, I mean, he, he seemed like he's just in a great place in his yeah. life. And I've watched him do stand up too, and he and he's very funny on stand up. He's not so funny on Twitter, but you know, it's hard. So to he work still does. He doesn't still do like stand up, does yeah, he? Yeah, dude, I was in L. A. and that's he's doing. Crazy how these guys do that. Like Seinfeld will still like jump because in and that's do that. their Keeps love. Fresh. That's, yeah, yeah. that's that's like that's saying you know, there's no feeling like getting an yeah. audience, an intimate audience, all dying laughing because of you. But you know, I read about like Seinfeld in the day where he would just jump into some club, you know, unannounced kind of, and just to ch test out his material. Because of course, if he announced he was going somewhere, then to be 10 million people, right? But yeah. it goes in just to get it fresh. And they're still neurotic before. They're still nervous, you know? They That's all do wild. that in LA. They yeah. all, like, I'll just jump in. And, you know, especially if they're rehearsed, like Chris Rock would jump in before the Oscars last year, that yeah. type of stuff. So That's cool. My uh, my favorite stand-up uh, story has to be Jay Leno. Leno, when he had the Not Tonight Show, would go in every Sunday uh, and just test out his jokes at a small club in Los, like at a yeah. small club in Los Angeles. And he would do it without any tone. Yeah. So he would just read them straight <laughs> to see if they worked or not yeah. without putting any, like, any kind of tone or... or, or he, didn't, he didn't talk like this guy. Yeah, no, he just... Yeah, he, he, he didn't yeah. say it's a true story. Yeah, he, like, didn't, he, he, just, he didn't say it's a true story. Yeah. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just, he just said straight. the joke. Yeah. It's wild. It's amazing. I 30 never, years I, of that. I never, if I was, I never laughed at Jay Leno jokes.
You know, like the monologues before that. I never liked like, the channel. But I don't think they're as funny when they start doing those talk shows. You know, like I think Fallon and these guys are still funny. They're very funny. But I think Letterman and Leno, when they would do those monologues, like I think they're way funnier when they were comedians or, you know, these kind it's of It's more actors. punchy. It was yeah. more like, hey, yeah. zing, zing. Like, you know, or even like Letterman when he'd do some callbacks in the middle of the show. You know, he'd make some joke 20 minutes later. That wasn't funny the first time, but 15 times it kind of got funny. A lot of comedians yeah. don't do callbacks anymore, I, no. I notice. I no. don't know why. Is that audiences forget? Everybody's like really trying to focus on five minutes or something short that you can just pitch quick. It's like the elevator pitch kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like yeah. everyone's trying to work on like mm. five quick minutes and in five minutes you don't have a lot of time to call back anything really. Yeah, but probably those old timers like, Le I mean, Letterman and Leno's an old timer now, they could do call back from their show, right? Because they had an hour basically of material, right? Like in between yeah. stuff. So 100%. Yeah. You got to throw back to it. Hey, that's what a callback is, people, where you, you brought up a topic and then and then later on you, you come back to it yeah. and, you, and it sort of it all relates. So Matt, this is exciting to have your uh, a feature in you know you wrote a uh, zoom tell people uh who didn't hear the first interview with you months sure. and months and months ago uh what it's about and where they can go and see it yeah so it's got uh uh allison bill and jason priestley gael garcia Bernal. is allison hot i think she's she naked she's also it? she is and she's pregnant now and she's about to be a mom so uh you know who we're he, she's married to is the guy from uh blair witch if you knew remember that remember josh and blair witch who's now gone on to be some kind of amazing producer. That's her no husband. No way. Yeah, and they're having a baby together. I Is think it weird that guy. I'm looking up Allison Pill yeah. naked? She's a very nice girl. Okay. Allison <laughs> and I, I don't think she's ever been naked in a movie before and she's not really in, I mean, she's got big breasts in this movie because she gets a prosthetic. Oh my God, food. that's her whole, oh, wow. No, she's, she's, she's not unattractive. She's not unattractive at all. But she's a very sweet girl too. She you know? gets fake breasts in the movie? Yeah, basically, uh, the film is about Allison Pill and she she's kind of unhappy with her body image and she wants to get some, she gets breaks, breast augmentation. But oh. she's actually a cartoonist who's making a comic book about Gael Garcia Bernal, who's a filmmaker. Really? And he's making a... If that can't be real, is it real? Is this her? I don't know, man. You know, Googling naked people on the internet isn't always reliable <laughs> from what I've read. Although lately, I guess all that fap stuff with all the, what they call it? The, the fapping. Yeah, I think pretty much like every photo is real now, which is sort of horrible. I mean, maybe Amazing. I shouldn't be looking at the star of your movie nude, but she said she was nude in the film, so I didn't feel so, so guilty yeah, doing but it. Yeah, with fake boobs. But, uh, but it's about three different stories, and she's kind of the, the, the one of the leads in it, and she's great. She's very funny. So and she... Tyler Bean. You know Tyler Bean? Do you know Tyler Bean? Yeah. yeah. Well, do how do I know him? I don't know, because you know everybody. He's I don't Canadian. know. Oh, like, like, like know him high? as a buddy? Yeah, I don't know. You might know him. Oh, he's from Breaker High? Uh, why oh, did you bring, lots this, of things why, since why then. you bring the stars on the film and not the writer? Yeah, I don't. Well, look at me. I don't know. I don't know. You're the you ever, guy. Do you ever write yourself apart like Tarantino does in the film? <laughs> I think I, I think that uh, there's definitely a little part to me in this. You know, there's a lot of like, there's a guy, El Garcia Bernal's character is kind of a phony filmmaker. And he put in a lot of funny, like kind of that quirkiness, fake kind of Hollywood jokes kind of thing. You know, where everyone's kind of sociopathic. So there's definitely that kind of stuff in there you know as, as a writer did you do you hear anything about the new suicide squad film how yeah. they've changed it so what, do you have any take on that as a writer well, it's funny because in Zoom, part of the plot is actually to do a reshoot in Brazil. That's part of the, the script is in which they go because they're not happy with it. I mean, How weird if that, if that was the part they took out of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's sort of the joke, right? About the whole idea of reshooting it when the studio doesn't like it. So it, it sort of oh. rings true, right? Wow. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but I still will. I'm not yeah. going to be deterred because there's a bunch of like shitty reviews. You know, no, but how, I think Jay's asking, how would you feel about being the writer of that film knowing that it got changed around? Oh, uh, man, I think it'd be... I mean, you're always kind of worried too, right? That something's going to go south in general right like if the movie's gonna get canceled uh, maybe me because you know it was early days but uh i think i would be a little upset yeah you know is the movie business suck is it like a shitty industry to get involved so. in no? i don't think so i mean i don't know i think it's uh i think it's a lot of creative people too you know and a lot of my friends are in it i mean i think they're my friends um <laughs> uh, no, but imagine so I, that you go and you write you spend like months and months and months writing a script and then you when you see the final product oh, yeah. like they switch the script yeah, on you they yeah. have free like they yeah. have total control with that kind of stuff? I think there is loyalty. I mean, I, I think all the cliches you read about or see on TV or something like that, that totally exists, you know? I think there's some cutthroat executives, like cut, cutthroat. I mean, my movie is like an indie movie, right? But some studio executives, I think they're just like completely a sociopathic, you know? But I think they have to be like that way, you know? Like, remember in Back to the Future, they cut, what's his name? Before um, Eric oh, yeah. Schultz, right? Like, you know, they shot the, do you know this? They shot the first, let's say, half an hour of Back to the Future. I mean, half, like 30 pages of the script with, What's his name? Eric Schultz, right? I believe so. Oh, yeah. And then, and then like, 30 pages into the script, they didn't think it was working, so they had to fire the guy and get Michael J. Fox. I mean, can you imagine that conversation? Uh, so, uh, you're out. Fox is in. I mean, it's wild. That kind of stuff. I wonder you know? if they paid him. 
Well, they probably did, but it's just a it's movie. Kind of like that, basketball. I mean, you could get you could no, get absolutely. make the team as a starting point guard no. and then be shit no, after the first thirty injured, games. No, I think all these athletes know that too, right? If they're injured, they're they're a horse, right? They're going to get shot. So, I think that's probably it's a business, right? Eric like, Schultz is the actor, and there's a lot of like. Footage and photos yeah. of him on set with, with Doc, Doc and everything. That's amazing. No, they, they've also shown side by side sometimes the different, and it, it's way better with Michael J. Fox. Like Eric Schultz is obviously a great actor, but he didn't have the funny kind of stuff that Michael J. Fox did. Is there, so. Was he in uh, Pulp Fiction? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, been a lot. Yeah, he's a good me. No, like of course he's, he's like a super actor. famous actor, but he's not Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future. No, right? that he's not part he, of this huge trilogy. Oh yeah, I mean, who, who knows? That seems like it would have been one of the best decisions ever made. Eric, Eric, However, who yeah, know, maybe we yeah. maybe would have been more popular there. See the difference between Michael. J. Fox and Eric Schultz is Eric Schultz looks like the kind of guy who would actually bang his mother in the past. <laughs> well, I'm here. No one's going to know. I'm in the past, right? So, no Matt, where can people go and see Zoom? So, right now it's in Toronto at the Carlton Cinema. It's also on On Demand. Uh, it's in Vancouver at the Rio tonight. Uh, it's also in Montreal at Park, And it'll be opening up in Ottawa and Edmonton next week. What a neat thing, man. Congratulations yeah. for you. No, thanks very uh, much. Really, it must be... You take your mom to the movies? She's seen it a couple times, which is yeah. funny because there's sex scenes in it, right? And, you know, the worst thing in the world is to watch a, a movie with sex scenes in it with your mother. <laughs> but beyond that is watching a movie with sex scenes that you wrote with your mother. Yeah. You know, the first time I watch it, I'm just like, my parents are Danish and they're pretty open-minded. But still, you know, there's like, it's not graphic. It's just, it's kind of like porky sex, you know? Yeah. But still, I'm sitting there, I'm kind of like... <clears throat> you know, and I know exactly what's going to happen. So, by the fun. way, Porky Sex in 2016 means something entirely different than the original Porky. That's Porky's. true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Google <laughs> you, that. You don't want to watch Porky Sex no. with your mom. No, okay, not at all. Trust me, uh, especially because it involves your mom and sausages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen, man, I, I really appreciate you coming in, Thanks and, a lot. and uh, I'm so happy to have gotten to know you the last few years as a friend. And watching people in Canada uh, have success, I think, I think is awesome. And a continued success and and write us a write us in a write, write let's write no, together let's do it. we let's, should let's, let's all we're jays a fucking these guys are rotting and jays this to get people interested like why aren't we no using doubt. this platform let's right go. here we got to do that one on russell and no, pitch we it to him we, we got to do, do a one sheeter i have a, i have a script for russell peters that is absolutely brilliant and i can tell you this he will love to play this part yeah. there's no question we in my gotta mind. get on him i'm get, we gotta fly down there and just Pitch it oh, to him. I'll, I know you will. I'll get it to him. I mean, that I won't be a problem. Can we do, do, do I have my word that we're going to yes, do that? Yes, you have it now. All live right. on. Things to do with the start of this new show. Start a rap album, write a script for Russell Peters. Done. Because uh, I have all the time in the world to do that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Matt. All right, thanks a lot. Where can people follow you, by the way? Uh, Matty Jelly on Twitter and Instagram. You love to tweet. You you get in there, bro. Uh, I like it. You, you don't know? care. It's you fun. got no filter. No filter. Not at all. Especially on Friday nights and Saturday nights. It gets even worse. You know? <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> don't drink thanks and tweet. Lot. Thanks, man. The Todd Shapiro Show. Turn up your speakers, especially if you're over 65. Sirius XM 168, Canada Laughs.